you're watching TV News Nigeria. In any community, government structures are meant to ensure good service, delivery, openness and citizens' inclusion in decision-making. In this regard, the people of Takwa Bay community and its environs are appealing to the government to provide the area with basic amenities so that they can truly feel the presence of government. <coughs> TV News' Karima Salami visited the community recently and now reports. Takwa Bay, a coastal community surrounded by the Lagos Lagoon, plays host to Atlas Cove Jetty. Nigeria's biggest petroleum products reception. As close as they are to modernization, residents of this community lack basic infrastructure and amenities taken for granted in other lands. Now, the people are tired of suffering in silence. They demanded for basic amenities during a community development program organized by the Carrington Youth Fellowship Initiative. They say their more than 100 years old settlement lacks electricity good schools, among other basic needs. But in several one-on-ones with residents of Takwa Bay, I discovered that power supply and access to quality education remain their top priorities. The only schools here are the Takwa Bay public primary and secondary schools, which are certainly not enough for this densely populated community and surrounding villages. Uh, the government have been able to provide us with one uh, junior secondary school and then it's not enough uh, the government is not helping in the part of bringing teachers uh, so it is the community that is still uh, talking to the parents of the children to pay monthly due for the I mean, for us to be able to employ teachers. The education level here, I think it is just because uh, most of us are showing concern as parents. That's why the children are able to make it in that part of education. We don't have light here. Yeah? And to talk about light is a very uh, serious issue. Because light is what really uh, makes life what, in modern life, you know, power is what makes life what, uh, what wow. And light we don't have. There's a lack of uh, government impact here, and um, there's this disconnect between the citizens and those who represent them. In this community, they are just petty traders, or uh, they get money from tourism, there's, there's a tourist as aspect of it, or fishermen, or coconuts, so they don't actually do much. Residents of Takwa Bay and its environs stress that government is meant to serve the interests of the people and ensure improvements in their living standard. They say as law-abiding citizens, they deserve a better deal. Karima Salami, TVC News, Lagos. And joining us in the studio to look at these issues outlined by the community is a member of the Carrington Youth Fellowship Initiative, Francesca Chiedo. Thanks for joining us. Now, now, I've been to many communities like this and it seems like they're often abandoned by the government. What's, what's unique about this community? I think, first of all, for Taco Bay, when we started our project, you know, the Carrington Youth Fellowship Initiative is a one-year project. The, U.S. Consulate in Lagos to select young Nigerians who are leaders in their own right to come up with a project idea. So we had a blank sheet and decided to look for a community within Iru, Victoria Island, since it's our catchment area. And when we got to Victoria Island, all those um, mm -hmm. Oniru and the likes of um, Morocco already developed. So they said, if you're seriously looking for a community where the government, there's that lack of engagement, you need to go river around that this is the upland. So that was how we went to Takwa Bay for the first time and started engaging them. And on getting to Takwa Bay, we discovered they're not even connected to the national grid. Oh. So they've never had light. So when you go to Takwa Bay, you just have people selling uh, fuel in bottles. That's the popular Takwa Bay. Yes, wow. yes. And again, most people say Takwa Bay, they just think of the beach. They don't know, mm -hmm. you have like six communities. They have six recognized government CDAs, Community Development Association. So that tells you it's not like one of those uh, waterfront communities that people just settled. So the government know that people live there. So over time, we've been engaging them to find out what have you done about your issue? Because government is not just those you've elected. You're also part of the government. And we realize that most of them actually lack the skill to engage. So it's not a question of just we just going to talk to the government. Well, we also need to empower the people themselves so they are able to also engage their le elected leaders at the local government, state and federal level if need be. So, yeah, that's what we've been doing. We eventually developed a toolkit, a booklet that gives them, like, guidance on how to go about organizing themselves, a community development toolkit. And we are, we've seen a lot of improvement because they are beginning to come together to mobilize, to look at, look inward the, the skills they have to engage those 
at the state and uh, federal level and the, also at the local government of level. Of course, these mm -hmm. are indigenous people of um, this community. What would you say would be their top priority or their top need in the community? The first is electricity, getting connected to the power grid. The, you know, the Atlas Cove jetty, the NMPC jetty is just right within the community and they're they are thinking of connecting to the grid and they are hoping, they've written several letters to NMPC hoping that they will connect them once they get connected. But no, they've not heard much from NMPC. So if we're not getting it through the NMPC, but the state government through maybe the rural electrification project can consider getting them into the electrification project that's been, that's ongoing. And uh, again, lack of teachers, because it's a riverine community, most people are very skeptical working there. They don't have teachers. And if you see in the news, most parents even need to contribute to get a few teachers they have. So if the government, the fair, there's a ferry now, unlike in the past when we started, we had to go through this open mm. cano boat. But recently we started using the ferry. It doesn't cost customers. So I think when, when teachers see that there's a ferry, there's a good transportation and system. safe one. Safe, it's safe, okay. you know. You won't even know you're on a boat. Yeah, um, you know you're on water, so we hope the government would consider. I, I think recently the Lagos state government did a massive recruitment for teachers, so they should consider also sending some people, perhaps an incentive for people going to riverine um, coastal communities mm -hmm. would, could help. And uh, again, water, they do, they do not have water. So the borehole you have, even the one that was donated by state government years ago, none is functional. There's a solar solar powered mm -hmm. water project that they had, but none so is functional. How do they find water there? They get water from marina. They just put ferry water down oh. to the community. Yeah, so this That's is a bad situation. <laughs> very, it's very bad. Yeah, in a yeah. metropolitan city like Lagos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so your project is for one year, and yeah. what do we look forward to? So we're just rounding up. Next week, on 12th of April, we're having our graduation at the consulate general's residence in Ikoi. And that will wrap it up, but we will be engaging them from time to time. Uh, like we have some of our project partners who said they will try to provide them, not necessarily hand-holding support, but try to see how they are getting on. Yeah, but again, eventually we are now part of the community. Mm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time, Francesca yeah, Chiedu, the Carrington Youth Fellowship Initiative.